All right, I guess we can get started. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, us today. Hope you're uh, uh, safe and sane wherever you are. And we will hopefully help you with the uh, with the sanity part, with a little discussion about SIMID, taking be paid back to the basics. Uh, so I'll be uh, your moderator. I'm Amit Shetty, uh, and uh, I lead uh, uh, some of the video and uh, other initiatives at the at IIB Tech Lab. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Aaron and uh, Ryan, uh, uh, who will be helping, who are some of the key members of the uh, SIMID working group, and they'll be walking us through some of the details uh, of uh, SIMID and some of the some of the uh, background as well as uh, some of the features uh, that uh, uh, that we have in SIMID. And before we uh, kick off, a quick uh, shout out to the, the uh, SIMID subgroup. We have a wide variety of uh, uh, members, uh, member companies who are involved, but really the people who are, are uh, people are the real key contributors here. And I definitely want to uh, give a quick shout out to all of them. There are definitely a lot of people who have helped build out the spec to where it is right now. So uh, before we get into the meat of the uh, uh, of, of this uh, 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 presentation, uh, wanted to give a quick highlight of uh, some of the history behind what, where we are, right? So uh, the V-Suite, the videos, uh, the set of video ad tech standards has been around for a little while, right? So um, VAST was originally released in uh, 2008, was followed by VPAID uh, in 2009. And then we have kind of had a stretch of time where we just had some minor updates uh, to the specs. In the meantime, the industry has changed a lot. The, the technology has changed a lot. We have talked. We have, we have a lot more mobile uh, video coming in. We have uh, connected TV support uh, that has to be uh, the, that that's now necessary. And in order to address all that, uh, we have the, the, we have, we have not we have not really done much uh, for for a while until 2016, where we started out to, uh, with a new set of standards uh, around uh, uh, around the V-suite. So VAS4 was the first, uh, followed by Open Measurement Omid, uh, followed by Simit. And to kind of frame uh, the, uh, uh, the what, what these specs are all about, uh, VAST is all about delivery, uh, open measurement is all about verification, and SIMID is all about interactivity. So a big part of what we have done is really kind of help uh, put together a little more discipline in how we uh, uh, do things uh, with, with, all, with these specs, rather than have a mishmash of different specs doing a whole bunch of different things. And before uh, we get started on SIMIT itself, uh, a quick uh, call out to uh, some some uh, recent work that uh, we've been doing with the uh, with our uh, colleagues at the IIB. Uh, we we put together a set of uh, 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 <clears throat> a, a, a set of collateral that help educate about the benefits of VAS4 uh, as open measurement and SIMIT. Uh, please take a look at that uh, when you get a chance to. Uh, I think it's definitely going to help uh, uh, learn about uh, the, the new stack, but also to really uh, help uh, uh, evangelize across the rest of your companies as well uh, uh, as to the importance of moving to this uh, new stack. Uh, so let's get uh, going with, uh, with with Ryan. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Thompson. I'm a software engineer at Google. Um, I work on the IMA SDK, which is a popular SDK for serving video ads on the web. And I wrote the vPaid feature in that SDK. Now, I want to start with an anecdote. A few years back, um, a person wrote an article about vPaid, and the article shot to the top of the Y Combinator uh, popular news aggregator site for people in tech. And I thought, oh, great, someone wrote about my feature. And it was an article about how terrible vPaid was. And it was correct. The thing is, he didn't get all of the details right. And I'm going to go over everything that's wrong with vPaid and how SIMID fixes that. Um, well, I'll just go over everything wrong with vPaid and then I'll pass off to Aaron. So let's go to the next slide. Let's start out with what vPaid is. It was made for interactive ads in 2009, back when Flash was where all of the video ads were served. Now, it worked fine for that. It gave the advertiser um, access to the video player as well as an element where it could put all sorts of interactive things, as you see in this picture here. Next slide. Unfortunately, that's not what it ended up being used for. 
Yes, it was used for interactive ads, but its main use case ended up for being for ad blocking or ad selection and also for ad measurement. Ad blocking, if you want to know about that, is not like an ad blocker. It's something like the ad itself looks at the content of the page. It might say, oh, this is a news site and it's talking about a tragic accident. So we don't want to necessarily show um, ad content because they don't want to be associated with that. That's what ad blocking is. Um, ad measurement is just the advertiser rightly wanting to know if his ad was shown. So with vPaid, you have JavaScript, so you have this element that can say, hey, what, what's actually going on on the page here? Uh, next slide. Now, the largest use case for vPaid is that the publisher will request an ad. Uh, what normally happens is you'll get a linear ad. Think an MP4 file with a video in it, and that will show. But with the vPaid use case, instead you get a vPaid ad, it has some JavaScript, and that JavaScript will then say, okay, I'm gonna look at the site, and I'm going to now request another ad. It'll show the video, and that's one of the use cases. But what could go wrong, next slide, is a vPaid ad could actually, instead of requesting a linear ad, request another vPaid ad that could then go and request another vPaid ad, and then you could end up with an error. All this could take a bunch of time, think six or seven seconds where the user is just sitting around not seeing anything. Uh, next slide. So it goes back to latency. The standard video ad might take, I don't know, two seconds to show, um, you know, 500 milliseconds for the ad request, second and a half for some buffering. Uh, let's look at a vPaid ad, next slide. Here you have a bunch of extra latency introduced. Now the user is at a few more seconds. Next slide. What about a vPaid ad that requests a vPaid ad that then eventually goes to the media? You can see how the latency adds up. And this is one of the big complaints with vPaid ads is it slows everything down a lot. and It adds a lot of overhead onto a user's experience. Next slide. Um, okay. So another problem with vPaid is something that publishers experience. So in Vast, there's a ton of different error, errors that can happen. Did my website time out? Did the uh, media fail to load? Was there a problem with the server? Well, what about for vPaid? Next slide. You only have one error type. It's the 901 error. And so publishers will say, well, I'm getting all these 901 errors. What does it mean? And the thing is, with vPaid, you just don't know what it means. It's impossible to really tell what's going wrong with your ads. Next slide. So another problem with vPaid is that bugs will sometimes happen. Because you're running JavaScript, there can be a bug in the JavaScript. There can be a bug in the JavaScript that's loading some other JavaScript. So publishers, players, SDK creators like myself have a tough time figuring out what's going on, who's responsible. Finding even an engineer that might be able to look at what's going wrong is a big problem for a lot of publishers and players and everyone else. Let's talk about something new that's happening right now and that vPay doesn't work on quite yet. Uh, next slide. So server-side ad insertion is a new technology that's coming out and it's becoming more popular. The idea is the ad is inserted right in with the content. So instead of um, serving some content, requesting an ad, loading a new file, having some latency, you don't have that latency because the ad is stitched right in there. It works great with the linear ad, but let's look at the next slide. With vPaid, it's not gonna work because you're not loading media. Instead, what you're loading is some JavaScript, which wants to load media. It breaks with server-side ad insertion in its current form. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, another problem with vPaid is it's not as well designed to work in apps. vPaid was made to use an HTML5 video element. A lot of apps will play in a native player. So when you have vPaid, you can't really follow the spec anymore as easily. It's possible to do in a little bit of a messed up way, but it causes a lot of problems. Next slide. So I've kind of gone over all of the problems. Um, it doesn't have reasonable latency. Debugging is really difficult. vPaid doesn't support server-side ad insertion. It's not built for mobile. And another problem I didn't talk about is the security issue. 
a vPaid ad has access to the publisher's entire DOM, and that's a security nightmare. Um, so let's go to Aaron for oh, for how we solve this. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Aaron Schatz, head of product and data at Power Inbox. I've worked in the industry, a lot of different sectors, and uh, I've worked on video standards for a very long time. So this is very near and dear to my heart. So uh, we've learned uh, where we were in the past, and let's talk about where we're going in the future. So SIMID, you can see the definition of SIMID, the Secure Interactive Media Interface definitions. So what does SIMID actually go? Next slide. So SIMID is a definition, and we are going to talk about basically what it defines right now. Next slide, please. So let's start with a high-level overview of SIMID and vPaid. You could think of the creative itself as a bull. vPaid basically allows that bull to run wild. Like if you ever think of a bull in a china shop breaking everything, that's what vPaid is analogous to. SIMID, on the other hand, contains that bull in a pen, and it doesn't allow it to break out. Next slide. So you can see the reference model for SIMID. Unlike vPaid, SIMID is built from the ground up to provide a secure environment for interactivity. The interactive creative runs in a sandbox and is unable to touch the rest of the resources on the page. The reference model shown here is, shows the difference between vPaid and SIMID. The real key takeaway is that SIMID is secure in sandbox and vPaid allows it to do whatever it wants on the actual publisher page. Next slide. SIMID defines the interaction layer between the player and the interactive creative. The SIMID model gives the player the control and the creative messages to the player the actions that are needed to perform its functions. This is very similar to other standards that already exist in the advertising industry. If you think of MRAID, for instance, this is basically the exact same thing. There is a strongly defined API and communication channel. All information communicated will conform to this well-defined API. Next slide. This should be very familiar to everyone that uses vPaid already. Simon basically patches a bunch of parameters just like vPaid does. Upon initializing, this information such as the vast parameters and environment are passed and the player creates a session ID for communication channel with the interactive creative. These few images are taken from the SIMID documentation. The, these three images were just shown right from the SIMID documentation. As you can see, SIMID is taking security as a primary use case. Since SIMID mandates a secure iframe, the player and page surrounding it is protected. SIMID loads a secure iframe and puts it over the player. Within the iframe, the interactive creative manages its look and feel while using the messaging system to relay information to the player. Next slide. So everyone's going to ask, how do I use SIMID right now? This is an example of using SIMID within VAST. It's all right there. VAST already supports SIMID, and as you can see, SIMID has two components that are present in the VAST response. This is a radical departure from vPaid, and that SIMID does not mask the media file behind a blob of JavaScript. SIMID's interactive layer is completely separated from the media file. So SIMID works with VAST right now. It's not something that's coming soon. It's ready right now. Next slide. Let's do a head-to-head -head comparison of vPaid and SIMID on a few key areas. Next slide. With vPaid, vPaid has full control over the entire player DOM. Think you actually get a piece of JavaScript on a publisher page. That JavaScript can do whatever it really wants. SIMID encapsulates that interactive creative in a secure iframe to sandbox it from the publisher elements. Next slide. vPaid is a black box. Again, it's a piece of JavaScript. You don't know what's behind it. You can't see it. You can't touch it. You don't know what it's going to do or what it's really going to play. With SIMID, the media file is transparent. It's given in the VAST response. The interactive creative and the media file are independent of each other. Next slide. Ryan talked about SSAI. vPaid and SSAI don't work well together. In fact, they don't work at all. You really can't stitch a blob of JavaScript into an actual stream. Since SIMID actually separates the media file and the interactive creative, that media can actually be stitched in the stream, and SSAI is a supported use case. There's one additional thing that's very important. Next slide. Variable duration ads. So if you think of something like a live stream, for instance, live streams and SSAI are basically very similar. What happens with a live stream is that video content has hard breaks and there are set break limits. With vPaid, even if it was supported, vPaid doesn't support the notion of having any limits on what it can do. With SIMID, that support is standard out of the box. So a player can actually say to the SIMID creative, hey, 
This is a set break. You are not allowed to actually extend the duration of the ad. The live stream, it is absolutely supported. And reminder that VPaid doesn't really relinquish the control until it decides it's done, whereas Simid, the player is in full control over whatever it needs to do. Next slide. VPaid doesn't allow caching other than being able to cache a JavaScript payload, and that in itself doesn't really help anything. Most of the caching is going to be needed on the media file. You're stuck having the client side load that entire video and experience in real time. Simid turns this on its head. Simid allows the media file asset and the interactive creative asset to be cached. This means that the media file can be cached and ready to go as soon as the consumer is ready to view it. Next slide. Along with that, VPay's latency was on display earlier in the presentation by Ryan. Simid doesn't have the same problem as that plagued VPay. Since the player has what it needs for the media playback of the ad, Simid encourages much lower latencies. It's a difference between waiting and playing, and in advertising, every second counts. Next slide. Uh, this situation should be very familiar with everybody. If anybody remembers the good old days, remember when video was really starting to come to its own on the internet? A few years ago, I remember watch, looking at a page and there was a pre-roll ad. And you saw a buffering icon. Then you saw another buffering icon. Then you saw another buffering icon. So what was happening was that that ad was mediating on the client side over and over and over again, just causing terrible user experience. With Simid, the creative is ready to go and this poor user experience is impossible. Next slide. Simid is only focused on doing interactivity and doing it very well. VPaid was really hijacked to cover more use cases than it was originally intended and really became bogged down. Simid leaves those use cases to other industry standard technologies such as Omen. Next slide. Ryan mentioned that VPaid and Flash were pretty much synonymous. It was expanded to work with HTML since Flash was deprecated, but really since then hasn't had any updates. VPaid only supports HTML video. Flash forward to Simid. It was built from the ground up to be able to support any video player on any type of object that supports a sandbox DOM. Next slide. VPaid errors, they're almost always fatal and they cause a terrible user experience. Failures in VPaid may result in a consumer experience that the entire page slows down or worse, the video content behind it might not even play. If Simid has interactive creative errors, the media playback could still occur without having the consumer be bottlenecked by problems related to ad delivery. Next slide. So Ryan mentioned this before. VPaid gives you a single error and everything is stuffed into that. Are failures really failures, or are they something else? Nobody really knows. With Simid, you get a wide swath of error codes from both the creative and the player aspect with the ability to put additional metadata on the error rather than just a numeric code alone. Next slide. So I'm gonna wrap this up by providing a rundown of just some of the improvements that Simid offers. Since Simid separates the media file from the interactive creative, this provides the ability to run the interactive layer in a secure iframe. That break also allows the player to manage the media playback and provide a seamless experience to the consumer in a variety of environments, even SSAI. Live streams also supported with the ability to allow variable duration ads or not from the player side. Simid allows for pre-caching, streamlines the ad delivery for lower latency. This is partly due to the removal of the process of the creative wrapping the plague VPaid implementations. Simid is built for the future. It handles interactivity its primary purpose and it leaves other industry standards to cover other use cases. With the focus on interactivity, Simid provides greatly enhanced consumer user experience all around, even in cases where errors are present. There's really no reason not to jump on Simid right now. You can use it immediately. Next slide. You know what? I've been talking for a very long time. I think it's time for us to show you what Simid really is about and a little bit of the demo. I'm gonna throw it back to Ryan to handle this one. Great, let me just share my screen. All right, Aaron, just uh, tell me if you don't see it for whatever reason, but let's go over you're, some demos. You're good to go, man. Fantastic. Um, so this is the open source Simid ad player that anyone that's writing an ad player can download. These ads are also open source, so you can download them, use them right now. 
Um, let's go over a couple of ads that you can use in SIMID. So let's start with the survey ad. This is a kind of a classic interactive ad. Um, it shows some questions. Now let's say the user does, with, with the way this survey ad decide to take the survey, um, as soon as you finish the survey, it ends the ad and moves on to the content. Um, if you don't finish the survey, then at the end of the ad, it will also move on to the content. Let's do another ad. This is called the selector ad. Now with this type of ad, a user might decide they want to watch a different ad or some different video that's shorter than the original ad. Here they can click on that. And now I just did a countdown timer for this ad to demonstrate what it is. They can then watch that ad and then it goes back to the content. Let's do another type of uh, ad that you can do with SIMID. Um, I'm going to just use a short ad here to um, demonstrate this. It's called the extender. These are sometimes called uh, ad end cards. So let's say you watched an ad, and at the end of the ad, the ad wanted to show a few end cards after the video played back. The user could then select one of those if it wanted, or if it didn't select it by the timeout that the ad says, then it goes back to the content. I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do. Um, I can just show you the really, really quickly the code. Um, for hey, some Ryan, of these ads. this code was open source? It sure is. Um, it's wow. all on the SIMID GitHub page. Um, let's look at it really quick. So with less than 50 lines of code, you can implement this extender ad. Um, I'm not going to go over it, but please have a look, because yes, like I said, it's all open source. And I'll throw it back to Amit. Love it, Ryan. That's that's awesome. I also lo love it that we we actually show code on a demo, right? Take taking the risk there. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see. To wrap up, um, we wanted to give a quick heads up on uh, some of the things that we're working on in the Summit Group. Uh, uh, first is actually, and uh, we, we are uh, we've been working on a cleanup of uh, some of the uh, language uh, that's in in the uh, in the spec, make it a little bit more understandable, make the flow work a little better, and uh, uh, definitely want to thank uh, uh, Aaron, Andre, and uh, Aaron for uh, sorry Ryan, Andre, and Aaron for uh, for that effort. Uh, really appreciate those updates that you've been uh, uh, putting in. Uh, <clears throat> the second thing that we are working on now is adding nonlinear ad support to Summit. Uh, that's the uh, 1.1 uh, update that we are working on, and so. Uh, uh, this is a perfect time for uh, everyone to join that subgroup uh, and uh, participate too. So email me if you're interested in uh, joining that. And finally, uh, like uh, like we mentioned, all the all the specs, uh, the samples, everything is uh, there on GitHub. So please do take a look and uh, uh, and you know, pay fingers if you have any questions. Uh, is we're trying to trying to make this as open and uh, easy to get to as possible. Uh, any uh, is, now, I guess we have some time for uh, some Q and A. Uh, and do you have any uh, questions? Let, let me quickly check if um, I see anything. Well, while we are waiting for some some questions, uh, let me let me uh, ask a couple too. Uh, so first of all, uh, folks, uh, Ryan and Aaron, can we use Simid? Anywhere right now? Uh, do we have that implemented anywhere? So I can answer from the standard perspective. So we rolled out uh, SIMID in VAST 4.2. VAST 4.2 has been released already. So SIMID is usable right now from a standards perspective, and I think Ryan can cover it from an actual implementations perspective now. Um, I thought of showing it in the demo, but you can actually go to the VAST inspector page and put a SIMID ad tag into the VAST inspector right now, and it will work. Excellent. That's actually really, really good to know. Um, I so see a question. That uh, is to say the IMA SDK is supporting SIMID. Perfect. Huge. Uh, I see a question about uh, uh, SIMID and CTV environments and how that would work. Uh, for instance, can you eliminate the need of an SDK in, on any platforms? Uh, so can we can you all talk about uh, how SIMID works on uh, CTV? Ryan, you want to take that one? 
Yeah, so CTV actually is a lot of different devices. Now, the limitation of SIMID is that it will only work if you can support a web view. So think uh, Android TV, Fire TV, it will work. Something like a Roku that does not support a web view, it will not work. Um, on some of the smart TVs, I'm not as certain, but a lot of them might support a web view. Yeah, I think I think the key there is that uh, from a, uh, uh, a technical point of view, we have been building uh, SIMID in order to support uh, CTV environments. Uh, the the uh, it, I think I think it will take a little more time for uh, all the environments to all the CTV environments to correctly support it as well. It does require, like uh, Ryan said, the web view uh, and and uh, 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 and and the other part that I want to uh, mention is that. Again, the same kind of uh, uh, need requirements are necessary from an SSAI point of view as well. Uh, we have enabled the uh, 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 enabled it. Uh, we've allowed for it to be possible. Uh, it still does need to be implemented. I also uh, want to like mention the bigger use case than connected TVs, which is mobile, and it will work on Android and it will work on iOS. Yeah, in in this case, uh, Simon and Emraid are very very similar in their their use of a web view so th this is built with you know mobile in mind and and it it's supported out of the box uh i'm trying to um get these get to these questions here not easy to control this oh yeah there we go uh so the next question here is what level of adoption are we seeing for summit it is brand new, and I don't know if I've seen uh, too many SIMID ads out yet. It was a chicken and egg problem, like ad makers might have wanted players to support it first, and players might want have wanted ads. But um, now that it's um, starting to be adopted, like with the uh, IMA SDK and other places, I think we're going to see a, a lot more SIMID ads in the future. Yeah, to add to that, I think the uh, it's important to... Uh, look at the, the the big picture as well uh, across all the all the video standards. Um, the uh, uh, so SIMID works with VAS4, and uh, uh, the other component over here is Open Measurement. The goal really for is is to replace VPAID uh, by uh, replace VPAID with a set of standards, right? So we want to replace VPAID with Open Measurement for uh, uh, all the verification and measurement related use cases, and SIMID for interactive use cases. Uh, and we've had open measurement on the mobile side for a little while, uh, but open measurement for web just got released into beta, I think, uh, uh, a few few couple of weeks ago. Uh, and so uh, it's only now that we have a more complete story, if you will, of uh, uh, for that's that is that people can move to. So I think that adoption is really going to be picking up uh, the rest of the year and maybe uh, uh, on to early next year before we really start uh, seeing a, a wide widespread support for SMN. But that's just my opinion. I, I can I can give since I, I worked at a video DSP a lot of the um, a lot of the need was on measurement. It wasn't on you know VPAID was heavily used just for measurement purposes. It wasn't really used for interactivity. And you know you talk to the publisher side, they VPAID is you know that piece of JavaScript that just stand on their page and does whatever it wants. Publishers want to be able to support interactivity. They just don't want it to be able to take over their consumer experience. You know, Simon basically allows that to happen um, in a cohesive way, and you basically say, okay, OMID is actually the way for measurement that, every, that the whole industry has worked around already, and now we have a standard for interactivity. This just makes sense. Where VPAID, it was just everything under the sun, and it, was, it really wasn't a good solution to the problems that were in the industry. Right. All right, next question here is, uh, would Simon also support interaction? which takes users away to a landing page, example, register, install, or yep. book button use cases? Yes, short answer, yes. Uh, uh, Click-throughs are supported. Next question here is, how does SIMID work with the IB OM SDK for viewability measurement? Uh, I think I can I can probably take that answer. It's, it's really intended to be separate, right? So uh, the idea really was, is to uh, have uh, uh, put in that discipline around which spec to use for which use case. So SIMID is purely meant for interactivity, and uh, open measurement is uh, really meant for viewability measurement. 
Now, the, there are uh, uh, obviously OMSDK has to be able to uh, me measure the viewability of uh, of Summit creatives as well. And uh, we, we have had uh, uh, discussions about that, and I think we're in, in reasonably good shape. But I'll, I'll 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 need to settle back on that. Yeah, just to be clear, you can use OMID and Summit at the same time in an ad. Yes, that's a that's an excellent point. Thank you. In fact, you probably will want to do that. Uh, so to confirm for measurement, do you envision? Yeah, it's the same question. Uh, uh, <clears throat> use of OMID or VAS for for one. Uh, ad verifications and submit only for interactivity. That's exactly right. Uh, is there a plan to deprecate VPAID? If so, what's the timeline? Uh, so we have actually deprecated the uh, uh, API framework uh, uh, node in, in VAST already. Uh, as far as the timeline, I, uh, uh, kind of goes to uh, what I mentioned earlier about uh, adoption really needing to pick up. I think that it probably will be at least uh, into next year before we really uh, can think about uh, eliminating VPAID uh, altogether. Uh, so, so deprecation obviously just means that uh, it's, it's more a signal, really, right, for people to start moving on to a, a new um, API or a new standard. So that's already been done. Uh, it's a question of when we see more adoption, I think. Uh, Ryan or uh, uh, Aaron, any comments on that? So this is, this is where the uh, call to action that we had in the original presentation for the industry, you know, a lot of this is um, driven by everyone in the industry. Ryan, you know, has, has said, like, the yeah, IMA SDK already supports this. This is now just building creatives and getting it out there for use. And, you know, I would encourage everyone in the industry to, you know, take a hard look at where VPAID is used and really consider the case that we have standards that are new, that are fresh, that are actually current, that actually cover the same use cases, and to, you know, build those creatives with those new standards. The industry has to move forward, and this is one way of doing it. Um, so from Google's perspective, we consider vPaid to be deprecated, and we're actively trying to encourage people to use newer, better standards. I mean, these standards are much, much better for the user, and you can still achieve the same things you did with vPaid. All right. Uh, the next question here is, could you talk a little more about Sandbox? How is it achieved? Is it safe frame or unfriendly iframe? I think Ryan's a good one for this one. It's a cross-domain secure iframe, essentially. So you will actually host the HTML that will go into that iframe. And the SIMID spec, all it does is it says, hey, if you want to communicate across the iframe to the player, here's the language that you will use. Uh, next question, will we be sending a recording of, the pre of this presentation uh, to the group afterwards? Yes, we will. Uh, we'll, we'll also be posting it, uh, I think, on our, uh, on our website as well as on YouTube. So uh, definitely you'll be able to forward it to your uh, uh, colleagues who are not able to make it. Um, do you know if the main viewability vendors already support VAS 4.1 instead of vPaid, which would support some adoption? Yeah, uh, I, I think that... Uh, uh, they, they, I know that uh, um, all the main viewability vendors already support open measurement, and uh, uh, um, um, uh, and they also support VAS4, but they also support uh, uh, the use of open measurement using uh, an extension to the previous uh, uh, VAS versions as well. Uh, VAS, now, the, the key part, though, uh, that, that's important from a, a re re replacement or repaid point of view is open measurement for web. And that's something that's uh, currently in beta and should be out uh, is is being tested right, right now with with some uh, 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 some pilot uh, members, if you will. Uh, and so we should be seeing that uh, coming out in uh, out of beta uh, soon, I hope. Um, have you seen any move to adopt VAS 4.2 and submit by the pubs since its release last year? Uh, so Simid, uh, uh, I think, is a little early. Uh, uh, like, like Ryan said, the, you know, folks, uh, it, it is uh, available uh, within the SDK. Um, VAS4, I think, is this, uh, is something that's a little different. I have seen uh, I ran an internal poll uh, within the uh, uh, Tech Lab uh, Video Working Group members, and I think I got about 30 plus uh, folks, or, or something like something around 30, who responded saying that they have implemented uh, uh, certain features within VAS4. Now, that doesn't mean that every single feature of VAS4 is supported by all those folks, but I think it's a good sign that there are uh, some key things that uh, people are interested in. 
so, so yeah, I, I do think that uh, we've been seeing uh, vast voted options trying to pick up. Uh, Simit, I think, like I said, uh, not to repeat myself, uh, is is going to be a little more uh, while, but uh, we do hope to see that uh, more this year. Uh, I think that's all the questions uh, uh, that I have. Uh, I I think that we can uh, actually give some uh, some of your time uh, back uh, back to y'all. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for uh, taking the time uh, this uh, this morning uh, to uh, get on this. Uh, uh, webinar. Uh, hopefully, it was uh, useful uh, for for everyone. And again, please uh, email us at uh, video at ibtechlab.com if you have any questions that uh, we didn't answer today. Uh, and happy to uh, uh, help with any uh, any help in any way I can. Thank you. Uh, one last pitch. Um, oh. Anyone that's looking to help out with the Simid committee, we're always looking for members. If you see a bug or an issue you would you would like, um, go to our GitHub page, post an issue. We're really friendly. Um, that's my my last note. Yeah, and, that's and right. Just to just to go off on that one too. We we our uh, participation for the working group has increased, and and we love that to happen. You know, these are standards that are made from everyone in the industry. So if you have, you know, if you're a part of the video ecosystem, I would encourage you to join the working group and, and at least sit on the calls and listen to what's going on and participate. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, really, uh, and thanks everyone. Uh, and really, thank you for uh, uh, for for your presentation today. Thank you. Have a good one, folks. Goodbye. Take care.